Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Natalia Avshnyuk, and I represent the group of scientists from the Institute of Pedagogical and Adult Education of the National Academy of Educational Sciences of Ukraine. Today in my speech, I will outline the main features of our research concerning the history of women's professional education in Ukraine at the end of the 19th, the early of the 20th century. It is worth saying that the history of women's professional education development in Ukraine is significant, exciting, and minor studied. For a long time, it was thought that pre-revolutionary Ukraine did not provide professional training for women and educational institutions with separate training. We believe that the study and further implementation of the advantaged ideas of women's educational institutions achievement can contribute to the reform of professional education, precisely its organization on the gender principle. Our research aims to conduct a historical and pedagogical analysis of the development of women's professional education in Ukraine in order to identify rational ideas about the historical experience and the prospects for their use throughout the development of modern models and concept of professional education in our days of Ukraine. Throughout the scientific analysis, the following research methods were used, statistical, comparative, structural and functional, program value and retrospective logical system. They enabled us to identify and classify the research materials on women's professional education development issues in Ukraine to disseminate the findings of the performance of the individual women's educational institution to the network and allow the study topic to be viewed in dynamic changes and time sequences. The geographical framework of the study covers most of Ukraine, which represented by nine provinces divided into three educational districts such as Kyiv, Kharkiv, and Odessa. The results of the study show that until the second half of the 19th century, girls received their education mainly in the institutes of noble maiden, religious schools, private boarding schools, and at home. In the second half of the 19th century, the reforms of the education system became available for the lower classes at all levels, including the university. It was at this time influenced by the development of the industry, shifts in science and technology in many European countries, that women began to work in new branches of production, as well as in areas that had previously been considered male, among which stenographers, engineers, telephone operators, and accountants. All these professions require a certain level of education and training. Women's education progressed slowly and began considerably later than men's education. General and professional women's education lagged far behind the demand of life, failing to fulfill women's educational needs. At the same time, despite the government's indifference, the system of educational institutions for women in Ukraine was expanding. However, they were subordinated to various institutions and authorities as shown in the table. At the end of the 19th century and before the 1917 social revolution, women in Ukraine obtained professional knowledge in pedagogical, financial and economic, medical, technical, agricultural, handicraft, culinary and art educational institutions. Moreover, they constituted a rather extensive network of primary, secondary, and higher educational institutions for women. Private ones predominated among them. It is noteworthy that women attended purely women's institutions and institutions where boys and girls were educated together. In the institutions of lower professional education, predominantly children with low income family study, girls were trained as seamstresses, dressmakers, and craftswomen in various kinds of needlework schools, colleges, and workshops, appropriate departments and classes at general and secondary professional educational institutions. Women were quick 
to respond to changes in tailoring and fine arts. The increased demands mainstreams the program of training skilled needle workers in professional women's educational institutions. The training of lower medical personnel was carried out in Northern School and courses. Moreover, Northern students were also trained in secondary and higher educational institutions. In the late 19th, early 20th centuries in Ukraine, institutions of lower agricultural education were widely spread. They predominantly trained skillful housewives, housekeepers, or specialists in particular branches of agriculture. For example, in 1914, in Ukraine, up to 20 girls were trained in lower agricultural schools, colleges, and courses. In these institutions, with duration of training from a new few months to three years, girls learned elementary knowledge related to trading. Commercial courses trained male and female professionals in certain specific subjects, such as accounting, bookkeeping, and office work. In the second half of the 19th century, girls in Ukraine actively enrolled in art, theater, and music schools, drawing classes, art workshops, numerous institutions of state skills, and ballet and drama schools. Thus, lower female professional schools equipped women with basic professional skills for working in the servant sector, various branches of the household and medicine. In addition, artistic educational institutions developed female pupils' aesthetic taste, artistic, musical, and acting abilities. Women of different state attended secondary and high professional education. Women's professional secondary schools had various specialties, such as pedagogical, medical, technical, and economic. An important place in the network of secondary educational institutions belonged to female gymnasiums. Girls who received an education in seven-year pro-gymnasium school or graduated from gymnasium had the right to receive the title of primary teacher. Specialists in preschool education were also trained at Kharkiv Frebel courses, Kyiv Frebel Women's Institute, and the private sitting school. We can acknowledge that at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, study in the gymnasium was a prerequisite for entrance to secondary professional schools and institutions of higher education. It is to be noted that in 1914, in Kiev province, under the supervision of the Ministry of Public Education, there were 37 female gymnasium as well as in Kharkiv 43 female and five gymnasiums with for education. It should be emphasized that from the late 19th century until 1917, there was only one secondary agricultural school for women in Ukraine, the three-year Lutmilinska secondary school of housekeeping and housestead farming. The girls were trained professionally, mostly in cookery, dairy business and gardening, and also the general education disciplines were taught there substantially. The enormous urge for women to receive medical education and at the same time, the small number of higher medical schools determined the necessity of establishing many medical schools which appropriate the higher one both in terms of requirements for applicants and in terms of their program. Among them were four-year Samaritan female courses for paramedics and midwives in Kiev. After graduation, the students had the right to work at midwives. However, the current level of lower and middle professional education did not meet the needs of women and they tried to attend universities. Women first attended lectures at Kharkiv and Kyiv University in 1859. After that, women studied at the higher women's courses in Kyiv, Kharkiv, Odessa, Katerinoslav, and Nizhny. Since 1906, women with higher education have been granted the right to teach in men's secondary schools. 
the higher art schools in Ukraine were represented by the Kiev higher opera and drama courses. These included the Kiev School of Opera and Drama by Mikhail Medvedev, the Kiev and Odessa schools of the Imperial Russian Music Society and the Kharkiv Conservatoire. Graduates from conservatoires were eligible for the title of free artists and were able to work as teachers and open their educational institutions. Since 1907, women could obtain higher medical education at the Odessa Higher Women's Medical Courses and the Kiev Higher Women's Courses. In addition, women could acquire such skills at the Faculty of Medicine at Lviv University, Kharkiv Women's Medical Institute, and Medical Department in Katerinoslav. Due to ignorance of the law of the estate, women could not fully exercise their rights. Despite this, women in Ukraine received their legal education at the law departments of Odessa and Kiev higher women courses, as well as at Kiev private courses called the Law Institute by Sinaisky and Midland. Women in Ukraine were deprived of technical education for many decades. It was only at the beginning of the 19th century that they entered technical schools. Scholarly scientists and private individuals significantly contributed to establishing technical professional institutions. It is known that in 1911, the Karobachkin Technical School for Men and Women was established in Katerinoslav. The training lasted for three and a half years. These courses were designed to provide complete technical education in mechanical and electrical engineering. In autumn 1912, the polytechnic courses were opened in Kiev by the Society for the Dissemination of Technical Education. Women could also study together with men at the Kharkiv Institute of Technology and Kiev Polytechnic Institute. It is worth mentioning that agricultural and commercial courses for women and men were created in Kharkiv and Odessa during 1920-1915, where students attend courses of wine growing and wine making. Therefore, as a result of our study, we came to the following conclusions. First of all, at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, lower, secondary, and higher female education of different specializations evolved in Ukraine. In addition, children from different strata of the population studied in professional schools. Second, we outlined the legislative provision of women's professional education during the research period for which belong. The presence of a large number of subjects of the legislative provision of women's professional education, their professional activity. Subordination to various departments, support for a private initiative in the field of women's professional education, supervision and control over the educational process, and clear definition of subjects of funding for women's education. Third, and last, the peculiarities of women's professional education development in the queen are the following. The presence of multi-level, multidisciplinary, seasonal women's professional schools with full-time and part-time forms of education. Functioning of professional educational institutions for different segments of population, disadvantaged children, representatives of national minorities. Functioning of mostly private women's and co-educational professional schools and availability of an extensive network of professional educational institutions. We are very thankful for your attention.